So that leaves me wondering, if this is 28mm scale, that makes it the same scale as a Warhammer 40k. So who would win in a fight between one white thick boy and one blue thick boy? Hey everyone, Sam here at Model Chili Scale Models, and here I have Rubicon Models Tiger 2, which is a 28mm wargaming miniature, so that converts to 156 scale, which is going to be a little bit smaller than the 135 standard scale for model tanks. But I thought this would be quite a nice little project to build up because it has um, photo etch parts and it also has a full complete interior, complete with all of the uh, tank crew. So I thought I'd uh, give this line a try and see how it turns out. I quite like the idea of smaller scale model tanks and it will be sacrificing a lot of detail compared to a 135 scale but um, we'll see how it goes. Alright, so we've got a instruction booklet, which has got a paint scheme at the back, and uh, quite an, an extensive sheet of decals. These are water slide decals, so pretty standard. And then just various bags of all of the sprues. So as you can see, we've got all of the internal components starting to show up already. Some other tank figures. And we'll have a closer look at these once they're out of the bag, but as you can see, there's one, two... Three, photo which fret. Four. Five, pretty large sheets of um, parts. So let's get stuck into it. So as you can see here, we've got uh, two sides of this main bank of oils, which is linked with plastic. But you're not going to be seeing those links once it's all been put together, so that's uh, not an issue really. And then you just need to attach all of the um, other interlinking wheels. So I'm just going to glue these sides together. Alright, so I've assembled all of the wheels. And I've got the um, sides of the hull here and the idlers and drive sprockets. So before I put all of these together, I'm just going to uh, prime them up. And I'm going to be using something a little bit different. This is Vallejo Surface Primer German Red Brown. And now with the primer down, I'm going to do a base coat of Dunkelgelb, which is Vallejo Model Air 71025 Dark Yellow. And now over the yellow, I'm just going to follow the um, example in the instructions. So for this particular tank, I'm just going to do a little bit of camo on the wheels, but it won't be as uniform as this because, you know, the wheels will turn, so it'll be in slightly different directions. And colours, I'm going to be using Vallejo Model Air Armour Brown 71041, which is the uh, classic German RAL 8017, and Vallejo Model Air Cam Dark Green 71019, which is the RAL 6007. And moving on to the tracks, I'm just going to spray these still on the sprue because I think it'll just be a lot easier and then cut them off and glue them onto the wheels when painted. And I'm just going to give them a layer of primer and then a base coat of Loho Model Air, just basic grey, 71047. And so there's a light coating of the grey over the red-brown and it uh, kind of gives off a slightly rusted appearance. So I'm not going to do a complete coverage, I kind of like that how it is, just to get the uh, weathering kick started a little bit. So now I'm just going to clip all of these off and then start gluing them to the wheels. Thank you. 
All right, so to complete the assembly of the tracks, I'm just going to attach the wheels to the side of the hull here, but I'm not going to glue them because I'm just going to use this as a guide as to how to attach the rest of the tracks. Because I want to be able to remove these wheels later on for painting and weathering. Alright, so that's both sets of tracks and wheels complete, and they went together really well. They uh, came off the um, side of the hull there pretty easily, so now I can put these aside and start building up the main hull. And the kit actually comes with a couple of little magnets, uh, one for the lower hull and one for the turret. So the lower hull one is the little ball magnet on this side of the sprue. And I'm just going to use a little bit of white glue just to secure the magnet in place. And then the front interior cabin just slides over the top, fixing it in place. Alright, so here's the lower hull so far with some of the internal detail. So I've got a couple of seats in there, the radio box, transmission, some of detail for the torsion bar system. It's a pretty simple but you kind of get the idea. You can kind of see it in the front there. All right, so here's the um, internal hull all painted up with the primer. I'm just going to leave it this color. I masked off a couple of sections where the ammo is going to be stored with just basic white. And then the underside was just the dark yellow that I used on the wheels. And so I'm just going to do a bit more detail painting on some of these internal details. And then install the rest of the internal bulkheads, like this panel here. Now the engine, which I haven't painted yet. Pretty nice little piece there. It's a shame a lot of this is going to be covered up when everything's been put together. And now for all of the stacks of ammo, I'm going to give those a base coat of Vallejo Metallic Bright Brass. And so here's all of the ammo finished up. I did a bit of metallic black and yellow, just for the different rounds. And then just finished it off with whites for the racks and tips of the each round. And um, didn't bother too much with the detailing for the underside since you won't see it and the brass came out really well there was quite a few thin coats I needed to get a really nice thick finish but um yeah it looks um it looks really nice the nice metallic bullet type finish and for the interior I've just uh, done pretty much all of the interior detail painting just uh, done metals a bit of metallic blacks some greens for the stowage boxes. I decided to do a little bit of weathering on the front control panels there, but um, 
I'm just going to hold off on doing the rest of it for now because I just want to kind of get it all finished before I start doing the weathering. Um, but yeah, I was just sort of experimenting a little bit with the chipped white paint on there. Nothing too intense. And uh, yeah, researching a lot of different um, uh, resources for all of the different colours for the inside of the Tiger 2 tank. And as is always the case, every single picture I could find has different colours for all the different parts. So it's just kind of mix and match what you think makes sense. So I've kind of left most of it with the with the primer red brown. And I've just detailed up a few little bits and pieces. Um, and then I'll just finish off a lot of this with a bit of weathering and some washes later on. But I think that's mostly finished for now. And yeah, so the next step is to attach all of the ammo and then move on to the upper hull. So the first step for doing the upper hull is um, you have the option to drill out some holes for a lot of the tools that fit to the exterior. Um, so you've got the option to leave those off if you want, or if you want them on then um, yeah, I just need to drill out. These are pre-cut holes with um, a pin vise. The kit provides a lot of options for uh, seeing inside of the interior once the upper hull is on. So as you can see, this main panel at the top you can leave unglued to remove so you can see the um, interior at the front. Or you could glue this on and leave the two hatches open there. The uh, engine deck, you can just leave this entire panel free. So you can uh, lift that up and reveal the engine underneath or you can leave the engine hatch open and see the engine inside. So lots of options there, but um, once all the kit's complete, the entire upper hull will be removable, so you'll easily be able to see the interior once that's been removed anyway. So in light of that, I'm going to glue all of these down. And uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna go ahead and glue all of those on. And uh, it'll certainly make it easier to paint up and everything all in one piece. Right, so now it's time for some photo etch. So I'll need to attach some of this mesh over these vents at the back. But before I do that, I'm just going to prime the uh, engine deck because that'll be pretty much impossible to paint once these uh, photo etch meshes have gone down. And uh, yeah, so I'll prime it, build it up, and then prime it again for the next layer. Now for the side armour of the upper hull, it's the uh, same as before, so I've just got to drill out some holes for all of the tools and tow cable.
Now for the bow machine gun, I'm just going to attempt to drill out the end of it with a pin vise. The smallest drill bit I've got. Might just sand off the end to make it a bit more flat. Sometimes it helps just to dig in a little indent in the middle, just to help line it up. I'm going to try about there. There we go, just a little bit of an indent. Then I can fill that up with a wash and that'll look much better. Right, so big decision time. Do I attach the side skirts uh, complete, or should I uh, bash them up a bit and cut some sections out? Because the kit has actually provided some guidelines on the back where you can cut these out accurately, and it even suggests in the instructions to give it a more beaten, weathered look. You can cut out sections and uh, even bend and twist pieces. So I just need to decide what I want to do with this kit. I kind of want it a little bit weathered, but not too much because this is going to be quite a late war tank, so it's not going to have too many years of life to it. Yeah, you know, I'll have a little think and then cut some sections out and then glue them on. All right, so that's the upper hull completed. I just removed a couple of sections from the skirts. Nothing too crazy. And uh, the fit around the front of these side skirts is, was just a little bit awkward, more than usual for the rest of the kit. It's just created a, a few little minor gaps where the side skirts meet the hull. Um, couldn't quite get it all to line up correctly. So uh, it's no big issue. I'm just gonna fill those in with just a little bit of plastic putty. I'll probably start from the back, just to get rid of that gap where you can see through it. I'll probably also attack it a little, a little bit from the front, just in this little bit here. And this putty doesn't really need sanding, you just wipe it away when you're done. So with the gaps filled, I just need to complete the primer process and paint it all with the red oxide primer.
All right, so what I'm doing here is just adding a bit of texture to the um, edges of all the metal plates because they're um, quite large and it's kind of looks a little bit flat and uh, not quite how the real Tiger II looks with all of its um, huge thick armor edges showing all around, especially the front of the tank. So what I've got is I just put um, some of the Vallejo plastic putty and I've just put it on the end of a really small brush. And so I'm just going over these areas and just lightly brushing on the putty. Just all in one direction. And I'll let this set and then probably go over it again just to build it up a little bit. And then I can just wipe away any excess. And so as you can see when light falls on the side it kind of uh, brings out a lot of the texture on the sides there. And once that's all set I'll just go over again with the dark yellow. And now moving on to the turret I've built up most of the interior details. So I've got the um, the gun breech, all of the seats for the loader and commander and gunner. Also a, a little um, coaxial machine gun detail in there. Alright, so I've finished the turret interior, attached all of the racks of ammo, and then attached on the lower turret basket with all of the dials and controls for the elevation of the gun and the turret, a few seats, and I've just left it pretty simple for now and I'll probably do a little bit more detail painting later on once I start the weathering process. So there's the gun elevation there, still functioning. And that just attaches into the lower hull of the magnet there so it sits loose but of course it doesn't uh, come out due to the magnet and so what i need to do now is just build up the exterior of the turret attach all of the uh, little bits and pieces and also the gun which is a single molded piece so minimal cleanup needed there and then i can get on to painting the turret and finally, I think we'll have a mostly complete tank ready for um, finishing up. Alright, so I've finished pretty much all of the basic painting. So on the turret I've just got the uh, yellow on the top and then sprayed white for the interior and also for the upper hull. Just kind of roughly sprayed some interior colours, so whites for the main and then red on the sides there. You don't really see a lot of that once it's all been put together of course. But um, yeah, so I've done a few test fits and as predicted, there's a lot of um, paint scraping as the plastic is uh, moving against each other, which you can't really avoid, unfortunately, unless you put all of this together, of course, and then painted it, which was not going to be easy. 
So um, the upper hull slides, the, um, the front plate there slides into these two grooves at the front there. And there's a lot of scraping there happening because it's quite a tight fit. I think there is a slight issue with uh, one of these side plates didn't quite go into the exact right position because I've got a little bit of a gap in the front here when everything's been put together. Also this join here doesn't want to sit flush with that um, plate that goes over the wheels. So not quite sure where exactly the issue is, like pinpointing where it's gone wrong, but there's a slight kind of misalignment going on there. But uh, I guess one of the disadvantages of having a kit that's got an interior where you pull everything apart so you can see inside is that a lot of these um, joining gaps are not going to be very uh, seamless, unfortunately. So it's just something I'm going to have to live with. Um, but other than that, I think it fits together all right. Obviously, it's quite tight, so it's not going to come apart anytime soon. When you lift it up from the top, it doesn't, you know, fall off or anything. So that's quite good. And then, of course, the uh, turret basket just snaps into position of the magnet. And then you uh, attach the upper turret. You've got to kind of hook it into the front of the gun construction there first. And push it down. Um, this is a little less secure, so if I just lift this with the top of the turret, it just comes off. But other than that, it just sits there quite nicely. And no major fit issues with this one. Everything kind of sits nice and flush. And then basically, you just got to plug the gun in. And that sits um, on its own alright. So I don't think I'll end up gluing that. Because of course you need to take the gun out to lift the turret off. And yeah, so uh, that's pretty much the main hull. And it's basic yellow. And so I've removed the wheels, so now what I'm going to do is start spraying on the green and brown camo. Now with the green and brown on, I'm just going to tidy it up a little bit, just going, by going over with the yellow again across some of these stripes. And I'm not too concerned about how neat and tidy this is going to look, since I'm going to be doing a um, winter whitewash over this anyway. Now with the camo applied, I'm going to give the whole tank a coat of Tamiya's TS13 Gloss Clear from a can to get it ready for the decals. And now with the decals set, I'm just going to do another quick coat of Tamiya's Gloss Clear over the decals. Now time for the whitewash, so I've masked off the interior of the uh, hull there and I've also masked off where the side skirts have come off so they would have painted this over the skirts and then where the sections have come off would reveal the camo underneath at least uh, that's my theory so for that I'm just going to do a basic spray of Vallejo white
Alright, so now before the white paint has fully set, I'm just going to get some acrylic thinner on the end of a cotton bud here. And I just want to wipe away the paint where the decals are, so this is where they've um, emitted or just uh, not painted around the markings. So I'm just going to lightly rub that layer of white off. Try to, try to make it look as natural as possible. Don't want any hard edges or anything, so that's why I didn't mask it off beforehand. And this is why I put um, the clear coat over the decal, because it's an enamel lacquer and it's not affected by acrylic thinner. So I can safely uh, do this without affecting the decal or the paint underneath the clear coat. And I'm also going to use the same technique just to rub around certain hard edges where I want to, some of the weathering to start. Alright, so that's that step complete, and I've tried not to go too overboard, just uh, showing a bit of wear and tear on the whitewash, the various spots, there's the turret, started to do just a little bit of streaking just by rubbing the paint back a little bit, and so what I'm going to do now is just give everything another light coat of the Tamiya Gloss Clear. Now I'm just going to finish off all of the uh, detail painting and first up I'm going to dry brush all of the tracks with some Vallejo gun metal just using a uh, large flat brush so I'm just going to brush it along all of the raised areas just to give it a bit of a metallic sheen And now for the wheels, I'm going to apply a Vallejo model wash to all of the uh, wheel details. I'm using a light grey because I just want to layer it on quite thick and so the light grey won't be too uh, overpowering but it'll still create uh, dark lines around all of the raised detail to uh, help bring out all of that fine detail and now for the track links I'm going to do a wash of dark grey Now moving on to the lower hull, I'm going to start doing some chipping around the white and the uh, red paint. So I'm going to do a mix of um, the surface primer red-brown and also black-grey. So I'll do um, the red-brown chipping around all the white painted areas, so the white paint is chipped back to the primer. I'll also do a little bit of grey for the uh, white parts. And for the primed parts, I'm just going to chip using the black-grey. So just a couple of layers of chipping going on, but um, I want to keep it quite light because the uh, story for this tank is that it's relatively new, so it's not going to have too much um, 
wear and tear damage on the interior. And now I'm just going to apply a light grey wash to all of the parts in the interior. Now for the interior of the turret, I'm going to do a, a wash of oil earth, just to indicate a bit more of a greasy, oily environment in the turret ring. And now to apply the light grey pin wash on the um, exterior. So now I'm adding just a little bit of chipping, so I've got um the black grey paint on the end of a little bit of sponge and I'm just going to lightly dab that on the places that were most likely to encounter chipping on the sides of the skirts And now to paint uh, a few of the exterior details, so the uh, gun, all of the uh, tools that are attached, and I'm just going to use various metallic colours, so for the gun, just going to use a bit of metallic black. I'll also paint the gun that's inside the machine gun that's inside the turret. Alright, so for all of the exterior tools, I'm going to try a couple of different techniques. So I've painted all the tow cables in uh, metallic black, and um, the, idea, the idea is is that the crew whitewashed the entire tank with all of the tools and everything attached. So I'm going to do a bit of white dry brushing over the metal tow cables. And for the tools themselves, I'm just going to dry brush on a little bit of wood colour for the handles, just to indicate where they've white They've whitewashed over the tool, but the uh, whitewash has rubbed off a little bit, exposing the wood and the metal underneath, maybe for the um, the um, all the other metallic tools. And uh, for the gun cleaning rods, I think I'll just leave them whitewashed. And uh, yeah, see how that goes.
Now I'm also going to apply the same white dry brushing over the wheels just to uh, blend them in a little bit with the rest of the tank and again this is just the cruise attempt at a kind of a sloppy whitewash job and some extra areas so this isn't meant to be snow it's just actual whitewash paint and uh, apologies if this video these video steps kind of seem all over the place mainly because I've never done a German tank before um, certainly not one with a whitewash and a lot of this I'm just kind of um, winging it really just thinking of different um, techniques to apply to the tank and just bouncing between all the different parts so hopefully it's not too disjointed and you can kind of follow along Alright, so with the spare track links attached, I'm just going to give them a wash of oiled earth. So I've just painted on a little bit of white for the racks for the track links, and now I'm just giving them a wash of dark grey. So I've just added one last little detail, which is this wire which runs from the headlamp to the uh, back of the front plate. And for that I just used a um, just a thin rod of styrene and just bent it at one end and then just carefully super glued it into position. It's probably a little out of scale, but I think it uh, looks quite nice stuck there and then just put a, put a, a light grey wash underneath to pop it out a little bit and then just dabbed the white paint over the top which didn't need much because it was white anyway so that's that bit there just a little missing detail which I thought I would add in and now for the crew figures I've got them all primed up in Tamiya surface primer now I'm going to do a base coat of Vallejo black grey Right, so with the black grey coat applied, I'm now going to give the entire figure a wash of Vallejo black wash. And so what this does is just um, darkens all of the recesses and leaves the um, raised areas highlighted with a lighter grey. And now for the skin, I'm going to use the Citadel Base Morgast Bone. And 
And now over the skin I'm going to do a wash of um, Citadel Shade Reichland Flesh Shade. Now a bit of gun metal for his belt buckle. And now just a bit of white for all of his insignia and badges. Now just for a tiny red stripe. All right, so that's the uh, commander and the rest of the figures painted. I'm not 100% happy with the faces. I uh, still need to uh, really up my game when it comes to <laughs> miniature faces. But I gave it my best and, uh, you know, hopefully with time. I'll get better at that, but I'm pretty happy with how the uniforms came out. I kept it fairly simple because most of these guys, once they're in the tank, you're not really going to see a lot of the detail, with the exception of the commander, so that's why I focused on him mainly. Um, he'll be sticking out the top of the uh, turret. So what I'm going to do next is give these a coat of matte varnish, a Vallejo acrylic from the airbrush, and once that's done I'll also give the tank the same coat of varnish and then it's uh, ready to be put all together. Now let's see if I can get these drivers in without breaking anything. So I'm just going to put a little Blob of super glue on the seats. Right, so the radio operator should be fairly simple. Just drops in. Down there. Now for the driver, it's a little bit more tricky. They've actually cut his feet off because they don't fit in there, but I just need to manoeuvre him under the steering wheel. Alright, so his hands fit nicely on the steering wheel there. So, so far so good. Now for the turret. Got the gunner here, so he's um, peering through the uh, gun sight. So I've just got to manoeuvre him. Down here I might need to bend this a little bit. Alright, so it looks like he's in position. Now for the loader, which might prove to be a little bit more tricky, because he needs to fit down past the breech. So we've just got to find a position, because there's the um, little seat down there that's also in the way. Right, so it fits there, but then there's not going to be a lot of room for the breech to move up and down. So I won't be able to move, elevate the gun at all. 
which is unfortunate. Okay, so what I might do is I might just um, use a little bit of uh, blue tack just to temporarily sit them there. I won't glue them in just yet. Okay, so now it's time to slide in the upper hull. So it just slots in at the front there with the front plates down, two um, gaps down the front. But it's a very, very tight fit. So the more I do this, the more the paint kind of scrapes. So I've kind of tried to avoid doing it too much during the build. Now the turret basket, magnetized, of course. And it has quite a nice 360 range of motion, so there's no Little bits or pieces that get snagged along the way. Everything works nicely there. And now for the turret exterior. Oh, oops, I almost forgot. I uh, sneakily did not glue the um, commander's hatch. So I can just poke that out. A little bit more. So that can swing around. There, just kind of stays in place with gravity. So now when I attach this, I can now slot on the commander. And his arm rests nicely on the cupola there. And finally, the gun. And there it is, finally all complete. It's uh, definitely been quite a, an intricate and challenging build, just from the perspective of um, figuring out what parts to paint before assembly, what parts to paint uh, after assembly, as I've never done a tank with an interior before, so there's definitely a lot of uh, head scratching to do with this kit. But I think it came together really well. I think Rubicon models have done an excellent job at bringing out all of the fine and intricate details of a Tiger II tank in such a small scale. Um, some of the parts may not be exactly to scale and there are a few gaps here and there, but overall I think it's come out as a really nice little display piece. And I'm really liking this um, 28mm scale. Not quite as huge as a 1-35 kit, but again it's a little bit bigger than a 1-72 kit. So it kind of just fits a, um, a nice little balance between the two scales. And so I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope it's not been too disjointed. Um, I kind of tried to follow the instructions, but I kind of sort of skipped ahead and winged it a little bit. Um, so I hope it's been uh, easy enough to follow. And as always, if you've got any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And I definitely look forward to doing more Rubicon Models kits. I've uh, got my eye on some of the others and definitely look forward to getting my hands on those. Now, there's certainly quite a, a vast range of kits they offer, both um, Axis and Allies, all different tanks, and especially just uh, non-combat vehicles, such as trucks and half-tracks and all of that sort of stuff. So, yeah, it's quite a, quite a nice-looking range. So, let's just take a closer look at some of the details of the kit. Pretty happy with how the weathering came out. And maybe it could use a little bit more wear and tear, but I think it's... Um, it's a nice indication of more, more of a fresh tank rather than one that's seen a lot of battle or use. And you've got the little door at the back for loading all of the ammo. So I've kind of left the, um, the frame sort of unpainted so you can see the red oxide primer. And there, the photo etch came out really nice. You can still kind of make out the detail underneath. And to the back, which I haven't seen much of. Just a box there, just a dry brushed with a wood colour. Just a little bit of rust paint for the exhausts, and not too much weathering on the back. Since you know it's not going to see a lot of action really. The putty texture indicating all of the marks where the metal was cut came out really nicely, I think. Definitely glad I added those.
Oh, here's the command attach. And I didn't forget the underside, so that was just a bit of a uh, quick and dirty wash for the bottom. And just a few, a few scrapes and chips for the lower half of the front. And the front glasses plate, very clean, not much uh, weathering going on there. And I did one of these rings unpainted, just to indicate that this one's been replaced recently and it hasn't had the whitewash. So it's really fun just thinking and uh, applying little details like that to these tanks. You can really create kind of a whole kind of story as to what the tank's been through or what it, what sort of action it's seen. All right, so I think that wraps up this video, and a big thank you if you've made it this far to the end of the video. I know these videos um, tend to be quite long lately, but for this particular build there was over two hours of raw footage, so I've had to cut out a lot of content, um, a lot of little steps that I may have omitted just to get it down to a kind of reasonable time. So again, if you've got any questions or comments or if something wasn't clear, uh, please let me know, and I'll do my best to answer everyone's questions. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Cheers!